Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we're gonna be doing is talking about the Zima board. Now, we're gonna be focusing on the distribution that ships with this thing. I'm still working on my full dedicated review of this device, so do make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss that video. I will note it's absolutely beautiful, very functional, and I've been having a pleasure using it thus far. This right here is the Zima board website, but what we're gonna be focusing on is Casa OS. That is community-based, open source, and focused on delivering a simple home cloud experience around the Docker ecosystem. You can just use this curl script right here if you're using Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, or if you're using the uh, Raspberry Pi OS, which will then go ahead and install this. Basically, it's just base vanilla Debian, but it includes the uh, wonderful dashboard that you can access just about anywhere, or at least anywhere on your home network and manage your Docker containers and all that really easy. They have some features in development that should be coming soon. Their website has some pretty cool things. And of course, if we scroll down here, this says what I just said, the supported uh, distributions and operating systems. And here is the hardware, including their Zimbabwe board and you could basically put this on just about anything. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start a clip of me doing my initial impressions and general overview of Castle OS that was going to be included in the full review of this. Ran a little bit too long, so I decided to make this its own video. And this own video is sponsored by Linode. Uh, I don't think you might be able to run this on Linode. So I'm just going to run through this uh, sponsor segment real quick while I see if this works real quick. This is the installation process. Uh, if this does actually work, create a new Linode, show you how easy it is to go ahead and spin up a Linode. I'm just going to stick with Debian region, pick a server that's close to you. Going to go with a little one gig plan for now. Casa test. And simple as that. Create Linode. We are now spinning up a Debian server in the cloud. SSH into the server we just created and then paste in this command here. There we go. So made by Icewale. It looks like it's just grabbing everything it needs. All right, there we go. It was as simple as that. It says Cast OS is running here. Can I just shift click that? Oh, maybe I need to get rid of the S. Ha ha. So there we go. We're in this, but we're gonna go through this in the video. I was just showing you how easy it is to do just about anything when it comes to Linux servers over on the node. I'm really happy that worked. <laughs> You can use the link in the description for a $100 60 day credit. Now with that, let's get into the overview. It is running GNOME 3.38 and the very first link up here that you'll see is Casa OS itself. And that's gonna welcome you the ability to create your initial account. Now what this actually is, is just a really pretty way to manage various Docker instances. When you make your account, you just create a username, password, click on the create button, and then you are greeted with your dashboard. We will be getting into that in just a little bit. When it comes to pre-included applications, it's your basic Debian install. You have your text editor, some games here and there. You have transmission to do, weather, and various utilities. I went ahead and installed simple screen recorders so I could actually record this. And in the settings here, we can see some information about our system, about eight gigs of RAM, uh, 32 or 31.3 gigabytes of storage. And again, this is the Intel Celeron N3450 at 1.1 gigahertz for threads. When it comes to how this distribution is customized, there's basically no customizations. You can see we actually do have all the built-in options that you'd really want, user themes, application menu, a whole bunch of different things with a GNOME extension, but by default, they are all disabled, which is kind of cool. Gnome Tweaks is also installed by default, so you could go ahead and play with your system there. But really, that is about it. Now, the actual way to go ahead and manage this interface or to connect to this computer is going to be through your web browser. I believe this is on 32. Yep, here we are. This is my dashboard. And here you can see how it's running. So we have our little CPU cores here the RAM utilization out of the eight gigs, that's how much is being taken up. I have had this on for quite a while. It's been a couple days now just running like this. We have a little bit of network traffic information or storage information. If we go up here onto the top, we have some account stuff. We have the option to go into our settings and change what this little search bar is, which if I do search something, it's allow some pop-ups. It's just gonna forward that to a DuckDuckGo for now. So you can set this as your homepage for your main browser throughout your entire home network if you'd like to. And of course we have a little terminal and logs option here. And right here are our apps. Now these are actually the Docker containers and you can see these are what is pre-included. We have files, file browser, Jellyfin, and Photo Prism. 
Now, just to run a quick test, Jellyfin right here, if we go ahead and click on that, it's going to take us to our Jellyfin instance. You can see I was kind of playing around with this. The uh, Big Buck Bunny is already on here, ready to go if you want to watch that. And you can see it is streaming completely fine. There's no issues, no lag or anything like that. That's because it's not using any hardware uh, transcoding. No matter how good your hardware is, it's going to use a lot of your uh, CPU. So if I actually open up Jellyfin again and play this episode of Deadwood, for example, which I know is not at the uh, proper format or the proper media codex, you can see the CPU shoot up, but I can't play this too long. But even with the CPU on a high load like it currently is, there's no lagging or stuttering. So for what it comes with, it's a pretty good device. Back over here, if we go to the App Store real quick, this is just going to be a bunch of different Docker things you can install. We have a uh, Pi-hole, Qubit Torrent, Nextcloud, MB Transmission, just a whole bunch of different things. This is sorted by popular. If I went ahead and selected like name, for example, this would be in alphabetical order, which doesn't look like they have very many applications in here. So for example, if I went just to the cloud applications, we're going to get Nextcloud File Browser and Duplicati, something like that. But if you do want something that's not in here, you could always go to custom install and do it this way with the Docker image app name, uh, where you want it to be and all that. And just for a quick example, let's just install Nextcloud. Click install. It's going to go ahead and pull that image. And if you didn't want to wait, you could always continue this in the background here. There we go. It's starting up and it says it's installed. So it might not be ready, but I'm going to go ahead and click this right away. And here we are in our Nextcloud instance. And I'm not going to continue through the whole process. But that's just an example of a quick installation. One of the pre-included apps, Files, is really nice. It allows you to browse the entire file system of your little device over there. And you can drag and drop things. It works really well. So that was the little demo of Casa OS. Definitely really cool. And as we saw in that sponsor segment, really easy to install. That's the default operating system on the Zima board, which I'm going to be doing a review of very soon. This thing is so cool. Like... It has PCIe, it's got dual ethernet. Ooh, I'm excited. With that, I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.